Hello students and welcome to this calculus lesson. In this series of videos, we're going to be looking at the fundamental theorem of calculus and how it's going to apply to particle motion and average value. So let's get started. So as we're looking at these problems, we want to keep some things in mind. The very first thing is that we know what the integral is from a to b of v of t dt. So in terms of a velocity problem, we know that, you know, in terms of position, velocity, acceleration, if we're doing integration, we are given the velocity equation, we're going up to position. So we know that it goes up to that position from velocity. Of course, derivatives go down. We also know that the integral means net distance. We've covered that in a previous video. And I'm gonna draw a graph real quick because what you wanna keep in mind when you're doing something with net distance, if we have like, um, a, B, C, something like that, and we're going from A to C. You want to keep in mind that you're going in the positive direction when you're above the x-axis, and you're going in the negative direction when you're below the x-axis. So net distance, you might end up going left or right, and then your net distance might be something smaller than your total distance, which we're going to look at here in part three. Keep in mind that total distance, if we're asking about total distance, you're going to have to make sure you do that absolute value, which means you're going to have to find the integral from A to B, and you're going to find the integral from B to C and make sure it's non-negative so you can combine both of those distances. So let's go ahead and look at this example problem. This is going to be a series of three videos where we're going to just go over three example problems and then you're going to have some homework problems to do after that. So we're given the velocity of a particle that's moving along the x-axis, and um, we know that at the position and we know the position of the particle at t equals 4 is 7t. And we know that the position of the particle at t equals 4 is 72. So what is the position when t equals 2? So let me write this down with some information that I know. So we're given velocity. So if I want to go up to position, I'm thinking, okay, integral. And so we're going from 4 and 2 for time. So I'm going from 2 to 4 here. And I'm going to put down my velocity equation. So that's going to be... 3t squared plus 6dt, that's going to be my integral, or my variable of integration there. And so I know when I actually evaluate this, that this is going to be position at 4 minus the position at 2. So what I can do, and I was kind of doing this in a, in a previous video, is we know that the position at 4 is 72, we can figure out what p of 2 is. But first, in order to do that, we're going to need to actually calculate this integral. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to get t to the third plus 6t. Of course, we're leaving plus c off, and we're going from 2 to 4. So that's going to be 4q plus 6 times 4 minus 2q plus 6 times 2. So we're going to evaluate that. That's going to be 64 plus 24 minus 8 minus 12. So all of this comes out to be 68. So now I'm gonna bring that value in because I know that that's going to be 68 here. So I'm gonna go 72 minus P of two equals 68. So I'm gonna say here 72 minus 68, well that's gonna get me the value of P of two. So 72 minus 68 comes out to be four. And that's going to be the value of p of 2. So applying what I know about integrals and filling in the values, I'm able to solve for part of a position function. I know where the position of the particle is at 2 minutes or 2 seconds or 4 seconds now because I'm given the velocity equation and a starting point. All right, let's move on here to part B. What is the total distance the particle travels on the interval from 0 to 7? So what is the total distance? So I'm going to have to find the total distance, and I'm going to have to take into account any time that this particle is moving to the left and to the right and adding in all that distance. Remember, when we change directions, that means velocity is equal to zero. So let's take our function for velocity, 3t squared plus six, and set that equal to zero. I'm gonna get 3t squared equals negative six. Uh, t squared equals negative one half when I divide that by three and t is going to be the square root of negative one half, which is an imaginary number. So there is no change in position or no change in direction for this particle 
on the interval from zero to seven or anywhere on this from zero to infinity. It's always going in that same direction. So all I need to do is calculate this integral from zero to seven, three t squared plus six dt, which is gonna be t cubed plus six t. We're evaluating this from zero to seven now. And then from here, uh, seven to the third power plus six times seven. Of course, all that's gonna be minus zero because when I substitute zero in for zero cubed plus six times zero, that's all zero. So seven cubed, 49 times seven plus six times seven. All right, so 49 times seven, that's gonna get me. All right, so I added the 42 to that as well. So I get a total for this integral from 385. And if we were given units, I could say 385 feet, 385 meters, whatever, but we're not given units um, in the prompt. And so that's going to conclude uh, this first problem. There's going to be two more videos where I go over a couple more examples. So stay tuned to watching those. Maybe you can even attempt those beforehand and see if you're getting the exact same answers as me. Of course, if you need any help getting some of these values from this problem, please reach out to me so I can help you out. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches. Thank you.